Our first guest here on Sports Central, Dan Talbot, no uh, stranger to Sports Central and uh, has been very, very busy uh, with the fall season. And we're going to kind of talk high school sports today. We've got Chi Wong, we've got Roy Fuqua from the Ledger, who does a great job. Um, in the playoffs, in the fall season, starting the winter season. So I know it's a hectic time for you, but thanks for taking the time to come on Sports Central. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, it's a busy time of year when you're, you're ending fall sports and you got teams in the playoffs and advancing through the playoffs and then, you know, winter sports. It was interesting this year, it was the first time, uh, and I don't want to say ever, because I'm sure it may have happened, but boys and girls basketball started on the same date. So that, you know, usually the, boy, the girls went first and did their tryouts and the boys started a week later. And so with the new format for the state finals this year, uh, boys and girls basketball started on the same day. Usually, you know, the winter sports are like a week apart. And so the athletic directors have time to kind of focus on one team for one week and then kind of move forward and progress from basically the start of October to the first week of November. But with ba boys and girls basketball starting on the same day, we've, we've been busy. Well, you were, tell you were telling me a story uh, yesterday, actually, that maybe there wasn't some great communications. We won't say what schools, uh, <laughs> but uh, they're used to girls have already done with the tryouts and the boys start a, a week later. But uh, some teams ended up in the gyms at the same time. Yeah, we had to uh, we had to do some cross court uh, tryouts instead <laughs> of you know full court, and so. But you know, obviously, they manage and get it done. But it, you know, it's. You know, it'll be interesting to see how the state and the new state finals format works out, and I'll be interested to see, you know, what impact it has and looking forward to it. And, and Dan, for those that don't know, talk about that new format and what that looks like and how that came to be. So we've been talking about it for a few years um, with the, obviously, you know, Lakeland is, uh, you know, we've hosted the state basketball tournament for, as anyone can remember. and that's what we've been known for is basketball and, uh, and obviously we're getting known for other things and which is great but the girls in basketball state tournament instead of being the first week of the tournament being girls and the second week being boys we're going to intermix them so we're going to have basically the first week of the state tournament this year instead of it being designated girls it's going to be designated the smaller classifications mm -hmm. and then the second week which was designated for boys is now going to be the bigger classification so for example, Winter Haven boys last year made it to the made it to Lakeland, and so did the girls. And the girls were a week before, and the boys were a week later. So when the girls are playing, you know, it worked out last year where Winter Haven girls I think played at one o'clock, and then the boys were playing that night at home at seven o'clock. Well, now we'll have a state semifinal game at one o'clock with the girls team, and at three o'clock we'll have a semifinals boys game and it potentially could be the same high school. Uh, so we're gonna look at intermingling the boys and girls game. So it, just to try it out and try to boost attendance and uh, create some excitement around the state tournament and try something different this year and uh, see how it works out. And it really makes it better for the fans because like you said, they aren't gonna have to come to the game and leave and come back. It, it's well, if you look at some of the schools that, that travel here, um, your girls teams in the state semifinals, but your boys are either on the road or at home in the regional finals to advance to the state tournament now you're asking people to choose mm -hmm. and so with now the format being the same and potentially both teams being having the possibility to play in the state semifinals on the same day in the same arena more people may be willing to drive to polk county come to lakeland and um, watch both teams play so we'll be interested to see how that works out well and it's it's very similar to what the FHSA has done with football, going to Metro, Suburban, things like that. They're mm -hmm. trying to find different things. And, and this is a, you know, won't know until you try it type thing of, of whether it's going to be successful and whether it's going to help boost attendance. But you got to give them credit. They're trying to do some things to, uh, to make the experience, which falls in line exactly with what Polk County is trying to do, make the experience better for the fans. Because, you know, as we talk about all the time, uh, whether it's a leisure traveler coming for the first time or sports tourism traveler coming to Polk County, you only get that first that one opportunity for a first impression so this is building future visitation to polk county hopefully this works out well correct and, and you know the biggest problem in, in the in the world today is people are afraid to take risk and chances and the, the nice thing is when the the fhsa went to suburban metro format for football that i think it was the fix to the ongoing classification classification issue i didn't think it was the the solver but it took us in the right direction that 
we stepped away from the norm of doing something they've done for 100 years and they've changed it. Is it the correct answer? Don't think so. It paid well for us. We got two state champions in football last year, but they're looking at changing it again. But the fact that is, like you said, they're trying, they're making changes, because the nice thing with the Boys and Girls Basketball Tournament is if it's unsuccessful or doesn't produce the results people are looking for, you can always go back. And then we won't have to sit there and wonder, should we try something else? We're trying something different. If it doesn't work out, you can always go back to the original format. And that's the nice thing. Well, I have an idea. Oh, boy. I know. <laughs> Chris, you know I played Indiana High School basketball before they went to classifications. Just put everybody in the same, just. It's a big I, they, they bracket. They went to classifications in Indiana and then destroyed the tournament. You're Nothing. saying one big bracket, just, just, throw them, bracket. just like NCAA. Well, and if you, if you look at the new classification. <laughs> it's never going to happen. But no. <laughs> no. Well, if you look at the new classification proposal, for, because this is the last year of the suburban metro in football. So they formed a classification committee with coaches, athletic directors, community people, and they have come up with a format to um, separate schools by population, but then at the end of the year, use the ranking system, and they haven't really decided on the number. The number of 16's been thrown out, the number of 32's been thrown mm. out, but what they want to do at the end of the year is pull out the top 32 teams in the state, and this is all sports, mm -hmm. and put them into an elite class. Mm. And so now the best of the best are gonna create and play in that elite class. So you, then you would get, um, just imagine um, Bartow basketball versus Columbus basketball in the regional s finals. You know, there's gonna create more games or take football where you could have a St. Thomas Aquinas versus a Miami Central in the opening round of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And taking those elite 32 and, and creating a whole separate division for the best of the best. And, and if you win that in the state of Florida, no matter if it's basketball, football, baseball, softball, you can win that elite division. You're, you're, you got a pretty good team. I think you had a, a great, made a great point earlier about some organizations or some businesses are risk adverse, you know, and, and uh, again, whether it works or not, give them credit for, for taking the chance to see yeah. if this can improve the, the experience for the student athlete, increase, of course, we, we love more visitation to Polk County. That, uh, oh, absolutely. Terrific. I mean, you look at the the state volleyball finals we just hosted at Polk State College in Winter Haven and Stan, Stanley Camardi and his staff did a great job and, in, in, you know, including Winter Haven and obviously now with soccer, including Auburndale, which is, which is fantastic. But this was the first year of the semifinal final mm -hmm. format for volleyball and the schools loved it you know I, I think the schools that won loved it I think the schools that lost were like well I, I probably would have had this game at home I probably would have won at home versus being here but you know six days of people traveling to Polk County staying in our hotels eating at our restaurants seeing what this community has to offer you know when it comes to sports and and it, it's a great opportunity for us to showcase how much we do value sports in this community, what we have to offer, and the biggest part, and I can tell this is, people always ask me, how, do you, how, do you, how are you getting everything? I said, it's, it's not me, it's the people that we partner with in our community, and the FHA knows that they're wanted here. Mm -hmm. And it's like anything else, you go where you're wanted. We want th these championship venues in our community. We want to expose our people to what championship events look like, and it, it's a great partnership, and, and, and great opportunity for everyone in our community and you mentioned the good thing is they're, they're spending more time here now but as we all know any tournament or anything like that you're gonna spend most of your time at the facility you'll have a little bit of free time but it gives them that taste of the destination to then say oh yeah there's there's a lot to do here maybe I'll come back here for a long weekend or for a vacation so that's all part of part of the, the grand plan is to, to get them back well here. I mean if you think about it, look what we have to offer we have the chain of lakes in winter Haven. Mm -hmm. You know, you got the Armadale Sports Complex, you have Legoland, you have uh, Margaritaville that just opened up. There's a lot of, you know, things to do in our county I think just people don't really know about yep. or think of it as a travel destination. But when you can get on a boat and go to 17 different lakes and, and tour around and eat at restaurants, I mean, it's a great day. Yeah. Do you offer your boat as like, you know, are you a captain? Do you do, you do a uh, Channel Lakes tour? Well, uh, unfortunately in my household, I am I am the what, what's called a bosun. 
uh, which is <laughs> I, I handle all the exteriors, making sure the boat's fully loaded and all the toys are on the boat. My wife is, unfortunately, she is the captain of the boat. <laughs> I am just a, I guess a deckhand would be the So you do term. what you're told is what you're saying. I do what I'm told <laughs> in, the, okay. in the boating community. I think well, all of our wives are, ca are the captain <laughs> in, in, in everything, Dan. A few more uh, <laughs> minutes left uh, before we let you go, Dan. You alluded to, of course, uh, the volleyball state championships on the girls' side just occurred. The boys will be later in the year. Uh, next up will be uh, cheerleading. Uh, and, and after or during the COVID time period, uh, Gainesville wasn't able to host it. We were able to successfully bring it here between uh, the, the school district and the county and, and, of course, RP funding with the city of Lakeland. Um, that was not unnoticed at that time. And, and now uh, those championships will be here for, for quite a while. Uh, boys and girls soccer will now be at uh, the Lake Mortal Sports Park in Auburndale. Uh, this year, the, lo the smaller classifications. Next year, the larger. And then the third year, the, the whole thing. And they're going to a Final Four type uh, format as well. And of course, uh, girls and boys basketball and then end it with um, or uh, weightlifting as well. Uh, so talk about nine state championships, different championships are in Polk County now. And you talk about the relationships. And I, and I think it needs to be repeated because Polk State, City of Lakeland, RP Funding, City of Auburndale, Lake Myrtle, the county, this district, they understand that, as they might say, we've got our stuff together <laughs> in this community. <laughs> is that, that a nice way? That's that that yeah. that the way to say that. I've heard it that well, way. Before. You know, <laughs> it, it all looks good and sounds good until I, I looked at my calendar. It's like I don't have one free weekend in February. It's just like state championship after state championship. But you know, I was thinking about this on the ride over because I knew this would get brought up. You know, police department serve and protect. You know, fire department serve. It, when you work for the school district, you serve the people of your community. And we provide athletics to our community, you know, as a way to showcase our talents, you know, what we do on the field and in the classroom. But you always want to take it a step further. And, and what great honor I have to be able to be just a small part of bringing these championships to give our community, you know, the exposure. And because we have, I mean, we're a working class community. And to take days off of work could be a struggle for people. Um, to travel across the state to see their, their son or daughter compete could be you know, a strain to the family. So bringing these events in gives one the exposure to the event, but also provides um, some families the opportunity to see that sport at its highest level in the state of Florida and right here in our own backyard. And, I, and we love it as, you know, athletic directors because when you send a team off and they're gone for three, think about boys and girls weightlifting. It's a day up, it's a day there, and then they travel home on the third day. That's a lot of school missed. There's a <laughs> lot of expenses when it comes to that. You, you worry about the student athletes and the coaches driving down 75. There's a lot of worry mm -hmm. in there. But when you can host a state championship event and the student athletes can sleep in their own beds, the coaches can sleep in their own bed, they can meet at RP Funding Center, there's a lot of less stress on that too. I was going to say nine state championships. We love that, obviously. You, you do oh, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. How many angry calls have you gotten from other athletic directors saying, man, what are you doing down there? You got nine nine state championships. We've got to come to you. Why can't they come to us? Oh, they, they, <laughs> we had a call yesterday with some county athletic directors. They harass me all the time. And, you know, they, they ask me if they can host something else or, you know, they want our approval to go after another, you know, like Donnie Tucker and Marin County. They got swimming up there in, the, in a gorgeous $38 million facility and swimming and, you know, he made jokes that you don't have anything, you don't have a swim thing in, the, in mind, you're not building a swimming pool, or, you know, we'd like to have swimming if that's okay. So, you know, they harass me all the time. We don't have a problem at all thinking that uh, everything belongs in Polk County. That's right. Well, Dan Talbot, uh, Polk County Public Schools Senior uh, Director of Athletics, thank you so much for all that you do. And, uh, of course, uh, thank you to Superintendent Hyde for allowing you and the, the school board for allowing you to do what you do. Well, you know, and, that, and that's the key to you. When you have the people above you that allow you to go out and do those things and support you it, it's a win-win and i appreciate you know our partnership and and looking forward to i don't want people to think that we have maxed out or we're done i think you know the beautiful thing about the people in polk county is you know we got the nine and we're already talking about what's next right all right well thanks again we really appreciate it happy thanksgiving and you too uh, we'll thank see you, you real soon if you enjoyed this interview and want to watch more sports central click the video below and don't forget to like, 
share and subscribe.